Okay, good morning. It's always difficult being first up and um, I hope I can share a little bit of my knowledge with you this morning. Um, I'd, as uh, Mark said, I've been in the industry for a little while now. But I'll just give you an idea of actually why I entered the, the camel industry. Um, some, sometimes people think that, you know, people just wake up one morning and go, Oh, that looks like a good industry to get involved in. Um, it wasn't that at all. It was um, from living in um, central Queensland and watching people go through drought and realising that um, there needed to be a better another resource in Australia to actually people to actually um, you know help with weed prevention um, and also um, to help generally um, pastoralists in Australia and so um, after going through drought in the early 90s and watching a lot of people go under I was looking for another animal. Um, I'd had horses and stayed in the horse industry and then um, had a partnership in the, the cattle industry so um, that's what led me to um, the camel um, industry and I actually wrote a two year study on the development of the industry in Queensland um, in, and completed that in 2009. At the end of that that um, then a group of people around Australia got together and we developed the Australian Camel Industry Association. So, and for the first couple of years before I started the dairy, I actually spent a lot of time running around government corridors, actually, you know, trying to get a voice in there. Unfortunately, I was the industry member on the Australian, uh, the National Feral Camel Management Project. Worst time of my life, I have to tell you. Um, I would spent most of that time listening to people on how they were going to shoot camels, and it was just awful. Um, so, but we did come out the other end, and uh, eventually they um, saw sense, and um, and um, my husband and I developed our our dairy. Um, it's been running now for three years, and. Um, and I guess in that time, in the last 11 or 12 years, I've gathered, you know, a reasonable amount of information on camels, and mainly because I'm a bit of a boffin, really. I just love science. So, and I could spend all day standing, um, you know, and just watching camels and what they do. So, hopefully, I can impart a little bit of my knowledge, and um, it's helpful. So, staff training. Um, so anybody who's got a dairy will, you know, have, have been through the trials and tribulations of, um, of choosing staff and deciding what, you know, who they'd like to come and work for them and how that's going to work so that they can move on in their business and actually start spending some time on marketing and getting their milk out there. Uh, when I started, you know, um, I was just happy for anybody to help me and I just, and you know, when you start and do that, you'll take anybody, but unfortunately that's who you get, anybody. Um, so we had a few disasters in the early stages and um, I won't go too much into those, but choosing the right staff member is incredibly important in developing your business. Um, and you know, do you choose either a camelier or a novice? From my perspective, I never choose a camelier because I don't want the bad habits from another company. So I prefer people, so I actually choose on intelligence. So I choose people who have actually got no camel experience and I prefer that they didn't. They have to be comfortable around large animals and maybe had a little bit of horse experience. They tend to be great people. Um, but they have to be intelligent because I can work with anybody who's intelligent. Um, but people who don't get it, um, I find it really, really difficult difficult to work with and I have some amazing staff members who have just, well I'm here, they're running the business. So um, it's, uh, so you know it's up to you what you do, you either get someone with, it, with, informa with who comes with a little bit of camel knowledge or not but I find that people who don't are always easier to train. So references, if there's something in your head going on and saying, oh, I'm not sure about this person, use those references. You'll, you know, sometimes there'll be something in their background that you, know, you may not want them in your business. And the final selection, this is how I finally select people. I let the camels choose. So what we do, that's part of the interview process. And camels are really vibrationally... Um, 
they work on vibration and they work on you know people's personalities and they pick it quicker than anybody so I find that um, I let the camels do the choosing for me if they walk into my camels and they're all over them like a rash I figure they've probably got the thumbs up um, as long as they've ticked all the other boxes um, if the camels heads go up and you can see the whites of their eyes give them a great big miss so um, because they've picked something in their personality that they don't actually like um, and you'll never get over that or you maybe but I doubt it so that's my final selection so one of the other things that we do in our business is that we have very clear, definable duties. So we have a list of duties for people to follow because unless they've got those, they don't really know what they're doing, um, but they've always got something to go back. So have a written training schedule. That written training schedule and ticking those boxes are going to come into play, particularly with work cover and work safe. It's going to be really, really important. So you're going to need to have a training schedule for those people. Um, quality assurance. Now, running a dairy, of course, you've got a quality assurance program, so they need to run through that. So remember, while you've while you've got a camel business and a camel dairy, you're actually not training cameleers. You're training people who have got food safety that are actually producing food. We are food producers. So while our animal is a camel um, and they'll need camel knowledge, um, they're food producers first and foremost. So those really clean practices and getting those down are really, really essential to the quality of your business and the quality of your milk. So, you know, safe, uh, you know, safe health practices are really, really imp important. Um, the other thing that I will say to you is providing a really safe environment for your people to work in is essential. You cannot ask people to work in unsafe conditions. So, um, and we provide an environment at QCamel for people to be able to walk around and walk safely until they grow their legs, so to speak, um, and actually managing and handling camels. So providing a safe environment is just important so that people, when they come to work, feel safe. Anybody can learn and grow if they feel safe. If they feel threatened, they're never going to learn and grow. Um, where to start? The first place our, all our people start is at the back end of a camel. Um, my philosophy is that if I don't know what's coming out, they certainly don't know what's going in. So you can tell a lot about poo. So, um, and as the boss, I clean up poo as much as anybody else. And when I'm training people, I'm at the back end of the camel and I'm actually talking about poo. That's the first thing we talk about. So poo, poo removal, what poo looks like, where the worms are are really, really important and not one of our staff has never not started at the back end. So, um, and you know, I regularly get out there with a rake and clean up and suck up poo. So, so I find that if they start from the back end and then work their way to the front end, they'll have a lot more knowledge. If you start them in the dairy before they understand what's coming out the back end, you're going to have a less, you're going to have far less performance out of that, that um, employee than some Someone, um, than someone who's really started at the base level. Work cover and work safe, really, really important. If you're not under work cover and work safe, um, then your, your um, employers are not covered um, if, they're, if they're injured. And it's, you know, it's highly likely at some time in your business that someone's going to be injured. If you're, if you're not, if they're not covered under workplace, work cover or work safe, depends on what state you're in, uh, then, and remember, work cover and work safe also cover your, um, the people that you don't employ, so your volunteers. Um, but they're covered under those practices and if you're not, if you're not registered with them and not paying those levies um, and they're injured, uh, then you really don't want government to go through you like a dose of salts because that's exactly what's going to happen to you because the minute they go to a doctor, it will actually be that, that um, information on their injury will be sent through to work cover or work safe if you're not registered. Um, all sorts of awful things are going to start happening to your business. So workplace health and safety manual. You'll, you need a workplace health and safety manual. If you haven't been audited yet by Workplace Health and Safety, get ready, you will be, because all farms are. So, um, and they love hearing about new farms and they love going and visiting them. We have a Workplace Health and Safety manual. Um, they loved us. 
because we did all sorts of really great safety things for our staff and I actually at the end of the, the audit I said, so how often do we see you every year? And he said, you'll never see me again. And I went, why? And he said, top of the pops here, we don't, we don't have a problem with you, you've done everything right. So doing those tick boxes are really, really important. I have to tell you, one of the things that they asked during the audit was, can we see your toilet? I went, what? You want to see my toilet? He said, you would not believe what toilet facilities people provide on farms for people. He started to talk about, um, if we've got any of our Chinese people here this morning, Chin people who employ predominantly Chinese people have awful toilet facilities. <laughs> anyway, we had to, apparently, we opened the door and he said, Rolls Royce of the toilets. You know, I, it, it still sticks in my mind. But, um, you know, everything down to the facilities you provide for your staff, um, you know, your cleaning facilities, um, how they operate, a workplace health and safety manual and making sure that you actually have people who are trained in first aid that are there, there's always someone trained in first aid, is really, really essential to your business, particularly if you want to grow properly. You know, if you don't have these practices in place, then really your business is not going to move ahead because at some time, someone is going to audit you. Okay, husbandry. Now I brought two books along that, and you can see they're dog-eared, <laughs> and they're um, we don't we don't leave home without these. They're basically at our our farm. Um, we use them all the time. Um, so the field man manual of camel diseases. Now a lot of that doesn't apply to um, here in Australia. We really don't have a lot going on in the way of diseases that they have, say, in um, North Africa and the UAE. But this book is full of valuable information. So, um, and you know, if you're just looking for things that, you know, whether it's whether you're trying to work out how old your, your camel is through their teeth or, you know, just information about carving, etc., they're invaluable. But they also provide another training manual for your staff. Now, the book here, The Camels, A Compendium, is a veterinary book. It was written predominantly by Australian people, so Alex Tinson, um, uh, Jeff Mainfield, and um, and Doug, who you met yesterday, was one of the contributing authors. His name isn't on the front, but he was certainly one of the contributing authors. Now, that well, I've got a couple of copies of these. I suggest you get one, and I am actually going to offer you something later through the Camel Industry Association about those. So they're really important books to have. This book retails for $120. It's really expensive. Either, you'll find it quite difficult to get, but I do have another way you can get it. Um, um, these, Amazon, just, you can get it from Amazon, so on. Okay, some husbandry tips. Um, okay, so this is some of the information that I've learned over the years, um, and, and I'm sure you'll have your own, but there's just um, a little bit of information. Um, intelligence. Camels are highly intelligent. Use it. Um, you'll... Um, they just, if you use their intelligence, it makes it a whole lot easier to manage them. Um, and if you notice, if you walk into your camel yard and you've got a group of camels standing there all staring at you, they're asking you, what do you want us to do? Okay, instead of walking around not speaking to them um, and getting them to go where you want them to go and them not, ask, and not knowing where to go, ask them. If you just point and say, Walk up to the yards. We don't ever, we don't ever, our camels, we walk, you know, 20, 30, 40 camels around. All we do is ask them where to go and just tell them where to go. They walk there. It's not hard, it's not rocket science, but they're highly intelligent animals. People who go, you know, whoop, 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 and, you know, or start yelling at camels because they don't know where to go, use their intelligence. They're highly intelligent animals. They will do and do anything for you if you ask them nicely. Selection. Um, transport, loading and unloading. Look, I select all my camels before they come to the to the farm. I'm, I'm fortunate I have a provider. I've tried a few different places to actually select my camels. More times than the, more times I'm actually unhappy with the camels that I get. Um, so I have one farm now that, that supplies me. Um, I go there, I can select whatever I like. I select them for a number of reasons. I obviously select them for utter temperament. Um, 
some things like how intelligent they are and it's pretty easy to tell. A really intelligent camel will stand and look at you because they're asking you what do you want me to do? And I, I can actually master camels just by getting them to stand there and look at me and saying, you go over there. Obviously they haven't got a name, so I ask them just to move over there. No, don't want you, you go over there. And actually people are quite amazed that that's how I muster, muster camels that have never been mustered like that. They're so intelligent, they absolutely understand it. So that's what I do. I find that camels who actually hide from you and run around the back of the pack, you don't want them because they're usually really nervous camel and they don't want to have anything to do with you and I find them a lot harder to train. Doesn't mean you can't train them uh, but I usually find that um, uh, it's a good sort of um, pinpoint of whether you really want that camel or not. Um, and with the other thing that I do, I always take a wadi. We call them a wadi. You can call them a stick or whatever. But we take a wadi because it's an extension of your arm. And when I'm actually selecting camels, I put them up at their front feet. If, we, if that camel's a front kicker, I don't take it. There's nowhere to go with a front kicker. So, um, and if you, d does everybody know what a camel will do when it front kicks? It's so slight, it's an inch movement in their body. They will actually lean back on their back legs. And if you don't understand it, you need to watch a camel that does it. They will own, their whole body movement will only move one inch. Okay, but what they're doing is putting their weight back on their butt, their front legs. And if they front kick, the, the, the first thing you'll know about it is when you're 20 feet in the air, somewhere that you never thought you'd going to be flat on your backside. And hopefully they haven't kicked you in the head. I don't. I don't buy front kickers. I don't like them and it's something that's really, I find, sometimes hard to train out of a camel. Um, sometimes it can take up to a year to train that out of a camel. Um, you've got nowhere to go and there's uh, horrific injuries from, from front kicking. Back kicking, they're usually just warning shots. Most camels don't really. Once you've 